So the next speaker is uh, Roger Morris. Uh, Roger is one of New Zealand's preeminent epi epidemiologists. Um, he's also Emeritus Professor in Animal Health at Massey, and he's talking about the establishment and genetic improvement of the dairy mead breed. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, John. Uh, this is a rather unusual uh, area of activity for me and uh, I got involved um, because the Kings who run Kings Mead Cheese Company and now Dairy Mead Genetics NZ Limited came to me uh, about five years ago and asked for my help in importing uh, sheep uh, genome material, genetic material into New Zealand because uh, I'm actually a biosecurity uh, specialist more than anything else uh, and I looked at their records and then I talked to um, the Massey geneticists and uh, came to the conclusion they actually had the genetic material that they needed right here uh, in their flock in Masterton uh, and we were much better off to, uh, to focus on that uh, rather than to focus on importing genetic material and now that Australia has uh, uh, imposed restrictions on uh, sheep arising from uh, uh, any flock that's imported genetic material recently, uh, uh, the dairy mead breed comes into its own as New Zealand's own uh, and only dairy uh, breed and uh, one with a very uh, impressive history behind it. Uh, and I'm not responsible for it. Miles and Janet King have done a remarkable job in doing that and uh, Nicholas Lopez Villalobos, who was sitting, oh, he is still sitting there, uh, is really the key to um, achieving this and I take uh, uh, my hat off to uh, uh, the enormous contribution that Nicholas has made uh, to the work that we've done in the last few years. So uh, back in 1996, uh, the flock was established with uh, 80 ewes, mostly Coopworth, but a small number of Border Leicesters. Uh, and uh, those animals were all selected for machine milking suitability and all inseminated with East Frisian semen from the 1992 Silver Stream importation. Uh, and uh, the semen and material, genetic material became available in 1995-96 and uh, was used by the Kings to develop their flock. And uh, going back to a paper that Jock Allison gave to the New Zealand Society of Animal Production in 1995, uh, he said in that paper, of the new breeds, the East Frisian with large body size, high fecundity in milk production, leanness and moderate wool production, will likely prove the catalyst for a sheep milking industry in New Zealand. It's only taken 21 years from that paper uh, to this conference now, uh, and uh, enormous progress is being made. In 1995, uh, very few people would have got together to talk about milking sheep, but uh, today we have a large audience here to discuss it. Now, after that initial establishment of the breed in 1996, uh, all subsequent importations have been East Frisian animals derived from various flocks and there haven't been large numbers of importations, uh, but all the flocks that were built up from the 1992 uh, importation. Within the Kingsmead flock, uh, it's now largely a closed flock, and uh, emphasis has shifted to building that nucleus Kingsmead flock, and uh, we hope a growing number of daughter flocks, some of them already established, uh, all the sheep with known pedigrees and with no need for further introduction of genetic material from outside New Zealand. The breeding records uh, and the lifetime histories for these animals are based on a complete record of matings, births and all other data in the flock from 1996 to the present. Now I've worked with a lot of farmers on uh, uh, their records and I have to say uh, Miles King's records over 5,000 getting uh, up around five and a half thousand animals uh, in the database lifetime histories on all of these animals and uh, in all of that data 
I could only find about half a dozen animals that had any uncertainty in their records. So we have a remarkable pedigree record uh, for this herd from 1996 to the present, which uh, was all on paddock diaries <laughs> when we started, uh, and it's now all in a computer database, but uh, a very impressive set of records. So uh, back from 1996, there's full birth data, litter sizes, uh, survival of lambs uh, and uh, all the other basic records that you would need from a herd like this. Uh, this is the uh, breed type that we've finished up with after this period of time. Uh, here's uh, just uh, one example, you, and uh, here's a group of animals that you, will show you the fair degree of uniformity in the flock. Uh, the one interesting feature here is these uh, uh, black with white uh, blazers animals that uh, emerged from the population. Uh, in Europe, there's a, a breed called the Schwartbless, uh, which looks exactly like this. And in Wales, there's a mountain sheep that looks exactly like this. Uh, we've now bred uh, a subpopulation. They have exactly the same milk potential, production potential, but they have this uh, rather attractive appearance. And I keep telling Miles that uh, there's a market for these with lifestyle farmers. Uh, uh, who want to have a pretty sheep that also produces some, uh, some milk. But they're perfectly good. Uh, we just have this sub-flock now uh, that has been bred uh, uh, to in maintain the, the colour pattern as well as uh, the predominant white uh, uh, colour pattern in the sheep. Now, uh, since I became involved about four to five years ago, uh, we've progressively introduced uh, productivity measurement and confirmation and assessment. Uh, uh, initially that was done by qualitative methods, but now uh, we're uh, adding uh, progressively more and more other measurements to it. So uh, we now have weaning weights, birth weights, ewe live weights, uh, scoring of milking suitability, both seat placement and other structure and um, milking meters are installed in the uh, milking parlour and are used for measurement of yield of milk, protein and fat. So uh, uh, Nicholas is calculating lactation yields from these results. The genetic analysis on this data set is conducted by Nicholas. Uh, estimated breeding values are calculated for all animals for lactation production of milk volume, yield of protein, yield of fat, litter size, maternal and direct effects on lamb weaning weights, ewe live weight, udder structure and teat placement. And uh, over the next few years as we get more and more data, the reliability of all these estimates will progressively uh, grow as we get more and more animal records into the system and uh, we anticipate adding more measurements over time. We then have estimated breeding values for each of the factors of, uh, uh, of interest and uh, we are combining these in something called the Dairy Mead Breeding Index. This provides an overall guide to the genetic merit of animals uh, uh, using an economic breeding index that weights different components, as I'll show you in a moment, uh, according to the, uh, their assessed importance. And uh, we will pro uh, progressively adjust this as the scale of the database grows and experience with analysis and interpretation accumulates over the coming years. This is a work in progress, it's not completed, but 20 years of breeding data is a very powerful starting point from which to develop uh, the information. So the weighting of the index components at the moment, we're weighting milk volume at 20%, protein yield at 25%, the single most important factor, fat yield at 15%, ewe live weight at a, as a negative factor, the smaller the ewe in relation to her milk yield, the better, uh, more efficient she is, so minus 5%, utter structure score 5%, litter size 20%, and maternal effect on lamb weaning weight 20%. Uh, 
Uh, this is a, uh, a judgment that Nicholas and I agreed between us. Uh, there's no, uh, I'm not going to try to tell you that this is the perfect answer. It's what we feel is a reasonable representation to weight the different factors at the moment. But of course, if you want to select for individual factors, the estimated breeding values are available for all the animals. Uh, so we chose the, uh, the weights and then uh, Nicholas has converted this into an economic index by starting with the um, market value of a litre of sheep milk and then combining the different factors uh, to represent both an economic and a biological score for each of the animals in the flock and all of the five and a half thousand animals uh, in, in the, uh, the, life, the long, uh, in the full history of the flock. And uh, results are s spread around a midpoint of zero. Uh, so uh, zero is the, the middle of the, uh, the flock range. Uh, uh, because this flock has been selected for so long, uh, then uh, a negative doesn't necessarily mean this sheep is uh, 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 unsuitable for use. It's simply uh, 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 obviously the higher, uh, as in the previous talks, the, uh, the higher animals are the better, uh, but uh, you can't have a flock in which all the sheep are above average. So uh, uh, we have to accept the fact that uh, uh, with the amount of selection that's gone on this, in this flock, negative sheep are uh, better uh, than many other flocks in the country and the top sheep in this, where some with scores of plus 500, uh, over 500 on our scoring system, uh, are exceptional animals. So future plans, uh, we will improve the reliability of both estimated breeding values and the index values uh, as the years progress and the amount of data grows and the number of variables that we measure grow. Uh, we want to expand the number of uh, variables that we measure on the animals, but we're doing that as a progressive stepwise plan. Uh, we want to expand the breed population through recruitment of daughter flocks that also undertake performance recording. We have re uh, the breed registered, uh, we have a company registered to manage the process, uh, and uh, uh, we will increase the number of animals recording as fast as we can. We will be incorporating molecular methods into the measurement program over the next year or so and refining the genetic analysis methods as we get more and more data. We want to contribute to the success of the milking sheep industry. Uh, I'm here to talk about the science but uh, uh, I will tell you that tomorrow the very first auction of uh, uh, dairy mead sheep uh, to release them into the industry is going to take place at Clareville uh, Showgrounds in Carterton. So uh, this will be the first of what we intend to be multiple opportunities for people to uh, uh, obtain uh, what I believe is probably the, uh, the best developed dairy sheep uh, available in New Zealand and one of the best available in the world. So uh, good progress has been made. Uh, the kings also make uh, wonderful cheese uh, and some of you have been uh, sampling their cheese. So uh, uh, this is where uh, all the milk t uh, finishes up uh, in the cheeses and I enjoy eating it all the time. That's uh, uh, dairy mead and uh, I think uh, I take no credit for any of this. I'm just here to uh, uh, be the speaker because uh, uh, the kings are away. One's organising the uh, the auction tomorrow and the other ones at the Cheese uh, Awards in uh, Auckland. So uh, uh, they're not able to be here to listen to the talk, but it's there to their credit and Nicholas's credit uh, that uh, this progress has been made. Thank you.